Yeah, buddy. What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chadish. We're back at it again. Happy New Year. Oh, my goodness gracious. I am so excited to make you guys a video. Uh, as you guys can imagine, it's been quite the the, <laughs> the crazy last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I've been basically I took some time off for the two weeks, uh, just trying to get everything in order. And it still isn't even in order, um, but we're making uh, definitely progress. So thank you for everybody's kind words uh, over the over the videos and the channels. Uh, we appreciate it. So uh, let's see here. So first video of uh, 2016, first video of 2016. It's going to be a critical thinking series, and it's it's, it's definitely um, one that I always enjoy doing. You know, that was the this was the uh, the the series that I dedicated to try to educate you guys as much as I can before I got all of my amazing guests on board for the educate and dominate. So. Um, this one's going to be, we're going to be, you know, like I said, critically thinking, but we're going to be, it's just kind of more of a, a, a little bit of a showcase and just kind of talking about my thoughts and my theories on, um, you know, rifting and whatnot. We got a lot of people putting out great videos out there and I feel like there's tons of good information out there, but everybody loves to know what different people are doing, you know, what different setups they have going on. And so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys my um, different units that I'm using basically as staples, uh, for my, you know, level three, level four, level five teams and, you know, kind of go from there. So, um, and again, well, I think we're, we're probably going to focus more on the level four cause I feel like that's the one that everyone's, um, the majority of the, the subscribers are going to be working on level three, but for, for the people that are generally uh, following my channel into mid to late game stages, I feel like level four is, is like the ultimate goal to farm. Um, you know, if you could farm on that. So, um, let's take a look. Let's take a look here. We are going to start out with, um, believe it or not, Orion. We're going to start out with Orion. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, feel that, you know, maybe Orion should be in there, should not be in there and whatnot. But, um, the big thing of it is guys, uh, you know, I'm rocking with a speed hit point hit, or a speed defense hit point. And I'm obviously I'm not making any drastic changes, uh, with regards to his rune setups. Um, you're going to see me talk a lot about, um, you know, runes, you know, rune setups are recommendations for my units as they're focused on Rift. But as you can imagine, there's a lot of units out there, um, that, you know, are, are play multiple roles, uh, whether it's PVP or PVE. Um, Orion plays a vital role in my PVE side, whether it's Arena Guild Wars. So I'm not going to make a lot of changes here. I'm just going to uh, make it do what it do and fit him in. Um, but he is by far a great, great choice, um, you know, with regards to trying to get him on board. Uh, and make it a and make it a part of your team. Oh, uh, why is that? You know, first and foremost, I'm gonna have to give it to the leader skill. Uh, we have been talking about harmless prank uh, for ages on end. Uh, we know how strong it is on the PVE side, but when I think about the uh, the rifting side, uh, getting those leader skills in combination, you know, getting those leader skills uh, synced up with regards to your team. Um, is extremely crucial, right? I see a lot of people that you know have these great units, but they still, you know die all over the place because uh you got people bringing in um you know leader skills that are that may be that are not universal and if they're not universal they're not focused on a different category so let me give you an example right i have a team uh i have a i have a group of two people in my team that we farm level four all day every day and uh two different teams and one of them uh we bring a uh, a hit point leader a defense leader and a resistance leader and then another team we bring a speed leader a defense, universal defense leader from their fire monkey king. And then we bring, um, uh, we have one of them that brings a, a, a Delphoi who has a defensive leader as well. And of course, because there are two different ones, um, one of which being universal and this one being um, the win one, uh, it's, it's, they don't, they do stack, right? Because they got, you know, one's a win attribute, one's a universal one, they work. Um, but the reason why we bring that particular combination is because our front line, on our on our defense, right? Our front line is all is all win units, right? It's all win units. So uh, it just all really kind of depends on what you want to bring in. When it comes to some of the common units out there that are used in, in all all you know parts of the game, um, and people are looking for you know leader skills that can benefit everybody. Um, you know, we got to throw a right in there because again, um, in addition to that leader skill, he's going to have that harmful you know harmless prank um, that's going to provide the defense break and the uh, three. Uh, turn hit point disturb. Obviously, the stuns are not going to work. Um, but again, having the opportunity to provide another heal heal block if you don't have a heal block from another unit um, is going to be crucial. So again, as far as recommendations goes, I still feel that the violence set 
um, is the way to go. You, you do have a lot of people um, ut utilizing Swift set when it comes to the arena aspect. But with regards to rifting, I I'm a big fan of the of the violent set. Um, you'll have people go back and forth because of the fact that the violent set's going to promote more turns, and the more turns means more triggers. As you guys know, the 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 rifting boss has a passive that you know generates uh, an attack based on the amount of triggers. Right? If you if you hit it multiple times, you could do it. But again. Uh, we're, we're looking at my scenario here, and my scenario is that I'm not going to uh, flip this unit to a swift set um, just to, you know, uh, remain, you know, not having too many turns or whatnot. I'm just going to have, I'm going to be using this one in, in so many aspects of the game that I'm just going to use what I got, and I do like a violent set on him, so extremely strong. Uh, moving on to my next leader skill, so right, if, if I'm not using... If I'm not using Orion as a lead, uh, generally uh, with regards to my teams, I'm using uh, Jameer as a lead. So this one I'm excited about. If you guys have been following my channel for quite some time, you guys know that this unit has been on the backbone, like like sitting there collecting dust forever, forever, right? And it, and it sucks because he's such a great unit, but I can't, you know, I can't utilize him, you know, all too much. So um, I, I uh, recently reruined him. Um, he was Violent Guard. Uh, with about 33k hit points and 1500 defense, but I brought his, def his defense down a little bit to increase his speed and to bring back Nemesis, okay? And so as you guys know, we're going to talk about Nemesis a little bit down the road. Uh, so Violent Nemesis, HP, HP, defense, um, you know, focusing on as much speed and hit point substats and defense substats as I can in the 1, the 3, and the 5 slots, as you can see right here. Um, obviously, I'd like to have a, I'd like to have a little bit more accuracy. I'd like to have a little bit more crit rate. But at the end of the day, he's here primarily to tank on the front line with that 1300 plus defense and to provide the reset skill um, as well as the attack break. I can't get mad at that as well as the attack break on uh, on this particular one. So, but but first and foremost for me, the reset is crucial. So for all you guys that have the win uh, dragon, definitely make him a priority uh, for your team. Not just for the speed lead. I mean, the speed lead is nice if you have uh, other universal uh, leader skills that you can bring on board. But honestly, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are, are bringing combinations of team that are going to bring, you know, double or triple healers or or, or double cleansers. They're bringing in a Konamiya uh, with the Delphoi. Or they have a, they're lucky enough to get an Annabelle with a Konamiya and whatnot. Um, I'm only running one cleanser, which is Delphoi. And because I have a reset unit... Um, it allows me to get you know more bang for my buck because I'm I'm constantly getting this this third skill reset all the time because it's always you know always being used or whatnot. So um, again, violent nemesis, a combination of uh, HP and defense um, because you definitely want to have you know a good amount of defense here on these uh, you know level four level five raids. I've been trying to focus on getting um, recommending like. Uh, anywhere from like 800 to 900 for level three defense. Uh, people unit using the defense on the front line. Um, anywhere in that thousand range uh, for units in the level four stages. A uh, thousand defense on that front line before all buffs come into play. And then for the level five raids, I've been recommending uh, 1200, at least a minimum of 1200 defense before any um, defense modifiers uh, come into play. So as you can see right here, we're at 1300 plus. Um, Almost, almost fourteen hundred. Actually, is that is that fourteen hundred on the mark? Oh, okay, fourteen hundred on the mark. So, we're we're right where we want to be, uh, with regards to level five. But of course, we're we're going to be focusing more on level four. So, right right now, we're we're good on the stats. So, um, so those are my two leader skills for the rifting. Those are the big, you know, big big units when it comes to that. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the damage dealers before I get into the healers, uh, because the healers are going to be talking about the rune subsets. Um, my number one unit that I use for damage, uh, believe it or not. Uh, is not uh, ninety nine percent of the time. It's not Theo. Theo is definitely um, a strong unit uh, for me because I, I you know I, I I made him that way. I wanted to be strong because I use him in so many things. But um, believe it or not, it's going to be Hua. Hua is going to be a clutch unit for me. Why is that? Because of the fact that again, um, it just kind of comes down to the skill subset. Having the ability to reduce the attack bar on the enemy um, is going to prevent him from you know getting those you know turns on a regular basis. Um, obviously, providing the slow is obviously a great, you know, it's a nice thing, but m managing the, the attack bar on him is really nice. Now, that being said, it is on a violent set, so I am going to generate additional turns and, 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 and increase that, that number of triggers on his particular attack for him to get an AoE. But, uh, you know, obviously, if I can get myself, you know, a nice swift set there with, with the speed that I want, I probably would do it. But again, I'm using the runes that I got right now. Um, speed attack attack uh, and again this is kind of interesting here 
Um, I'm using the runes that I got available. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of people, you see a lot of people go with the crit damage on the, uh, on the, on the four slot. I, I generally do as well, but when I was playing around with different, um, rune setups, rune builds, I, I wasn't able to, uh, generate more damage with the higher crit damage with the loss of the attack that I get on here. So let me, let me break that down. If I were to take this off and put a crit damage rune on and get a little more crit rate, crit damage, whatever, even though I would have, you know, 170, you know, crit damage, I would have, I would only have plus 600 attack. I would literally lose about uh, 528 attack power, which kind of sucks. You know, you would think that, you know, hey, that, that crit damage modifier is super strong. Get to get, you know, so much more damage if you just go crit damage on four slot all day. But for me, with this particular rune set that we have, I'm getting more damage out of going speed attack attack versus going speed crit damage attack. It's really weird, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, so he's that's my number one go-to guy as far as the damage goes. If I'm trying to incorporate somebody else on the damage, um, then Theo's going to come into play. Obviously, uh, you know, Violent, Violent Revenge for me is what I'm rocking. Um, attack, crit damage, attack. But, you know, I see people go multiple ways. Speed, crit damage, attack, attack, crit damage, attack. I'm not here to argue which one's the best uh, because we generally uh, set it up for different uh, reasons, you know, uh, with regards to like PvE or PvP. Mo most importantly, most notably PvP. But um, as far as bringing him into the role, I do I do feel that he does an absurd amount of damage, and so it is it is nice to have him. Um, but again, if I'm trying to do a, a decent amount of damage, but trying to manipulate the attack bar just a little bit, then I do like Hua. I do like Hua as a primary. If you're if you're only running one to two units, then I do like Hua being one of those units um, to throw in there. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, as far as the damage dealers go, so those are my two damage dealers on my rifting teams. Um, nothing crazy there. I am rocking a shield set. That's not, there's nothing, you know, special about that. If anything, it's, it's a bad idea to run shield because of the extra, uh, buff that it puts, you know, the more buffs that the, uh, rift boss takes, the, the stronger he gets. So essentially that's not good, but because this is a very, um, you know, it's a three turn thing and I generally, you know, wear out the three turns, you know, really quick. I'm not too concerned about it. Again, I'm just putting on the runes that I got, you know, for the time being. So yeah. That is pretty much it. Now, in addition to uh, the only other unit that I forgot to add in there with regards to Orion, um, depending on what speed leader I'm running and depending on if my uh, uh, teammates are running a defensive leader, like for wind or whatnot, then I might swap out Bernard for Orion. Uh, and again, uh, this is just going to provide me the extra attack break that I want, um, the swift buff to, to get more turns. I mean, I get the attack bar boost from Orion, but then having the Having a swift buff is nice, but like I was saying before, we can argue back and forth if it's if it's a good thing or not because of the fact that uh, you you know I'm going back and forth uh, you know providing more more buffs for me, which is good. It makes me go faster, but that's more buffs that the boss can take. So it's kind of a give and take there on that particular one. Um, over 1100 defense. I do have a rune um, that I would like to replace on here that gives me more. It gives me about uh, it gives me hit points, but then it has about 25 percent defense and things. But I'm gonna wait. More than likely gonna wait till uh, root him over to make that make that switch. So um, okay, and I think that's that's it for my um, leader uh, leader skill users, my damage dealers, and my regular kind of like supporty kind of buffy kind of people. Now uh, let's get into my healers uh, with regards to this particular you know uh, thing. Um, I guess we're gonna have to start out with my overall thought process on the healers, right? Uh, in, in my humble opinion, you know, obviously you're going to do whatever you got to do to get the stats that you want. Um, but I highly recommend um, trying to work in, uh, you know, the Nemesis uh, subset, if at all possible. Um, and, and it's never been more clear to me um, having the ability to, uh, you know, get that extra attack gauge, right? You, you want to, even though you want to... How do I say this? You want to get, you want to, you know, you don't want to hit the hit the boss so many times, but you you definitely want to get your your healers, your cleansers available to go um, as much as possible. And because you have a way of manipulating that by um, increasing your attack age for every uh, seven hit points loss, um, I feel like the nemesis is like the the perfect subset when it comes to rifting. When it comes to rifting for your healers and your cleansers, uh, if you can make it happen. If not, you know, just do what you got to do to you know keep the uh, resist up so that you don't get sun 24 seven. But if you have the opportunity to 
run the Nemesis set, then do it. And again, with the Violent set as the main set, it gives you the opportunity to proc out of a stun, which happens a lot in the Rifting. So you're going to see a lot of Violent Nemesis sets on, on, on the majority of my healers that I use. Uh, let's take a look here. So first and foremost here, we got Delphoi uh, running at about 30k hit points with 180 speed. Um, speed, hit point, hit point. Now, if I had, if I had the uh, runes, right, if I had the runes, I would probably do something like um, hit point, hit point defense um, to get her defense above uh, that 1200 range. Uh, and then, um, you know, if I were to run a, a hit point rune here or a defensive rune here, I would make sure that I would have anywhere from like 15 to 20 speed, just, just to make up for the speed that I would generally lose off of here, you know, on, on this on this particular unit. Um, with, this, with this one being my only cleanser, I definitely want, you know, her as fast as possible, but as tanky as possible because I don't want her to die. I'm generally not running the Rezzer on my team, so, uh, but I do, you know, I do use use them in certain situations depending on the composition. Uh, I think, again, I've seen a lot of great combinations of, of Delphoids. The best Delphoids that I've seen are the ones that have uh, uh, hit point, a mixture of hit point and defense on the 2, 4, and 6, and then they have anywhere from 60 to 70 uh, speed subsets on the runes. You know, that's 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 the big thing it comes down to, guys. Taking those high quality runes and making them fit in the two four six slot and trying to get away from having just straight speed on a two. Because when you use a speed on two, you definitely get the speed that you want uh you know for a particular setup, but you're you're losing out on so much value when it comes to that primary stat. I mean if you have the opportunity to get yourself anywhere from 15 to 20 speed on the substats and then and then come at you with a 63 defense or or a 63 percent hit points i think that's there's more value to that um and i'll give you a, i'll give you a good example of my of one of my resers here that i set up here recently so um overall i like the setup yes i don't have any accuracy but again i'm not too concerned about um you know making sure that this skill lands i mean i do have a little bit of critical rate so i might you know land it um, but the big thing over here is just to be able to get the opportunity to use the spirit's blessing as much as possible so by the nemesis is the way to go now um that all being said uh, Chisun is the next one up here, and Chisun is actually not Violent Nemesis. She is, uh, Violent Endure, and the only reason why she's Violent Endure is because in my arena defense setup, she is perfectly synced with my, with my, with my team. I want her, you know, just a little bit, uh, a little bit higher on the speed, uh, you know, over Theo, but then a little bit under, um, Vanessa, so that if Vanessa reses, then she uses her Fallen Blossoms right away, so... Um, if I were to get her on a Violent Nemesis while keeping the same speed, I would, but because I can't, she stays on the Violent Endure with max resist so I can make sure that um, I have the best opportunity to resist the stuns that come my way so that I can make sure and heal when at all possible, okay? Um, going back to my next healer, we got ourselves uh, Belladion again. I've been running Violent Nemesis for quite a few months now. I haven't made any changes on the runes, uh, but again, speed, hit point, hit point, and my ultimate goal is to get a, a hit point or defense rune here um, with, you know, 15 to 20 speed substats so that I can get myself uh, the additional uh, defense or hit points that I want to, to make sure that this guy tanks. Okay, we got a lot of uh, people on our in our guild, in the Alpha, Epic for Alpha guild, that are running about a, a 25,000 hit point Belladion with anywhere from 1,400 to uh, 1,600 defense. Um, it's pretty crazy, uh, the, the numbers that are pulling, but... With those kind of numbers, you can put Belody on, on the front line if you need a unit to, to tank on the front line. You know, but again, it just kind of depends on the runes and the sets that you got, right? So yeah, we got Belody on there again. Violent Nemesis, you want to have the, the most opportunities to get yourself um, this heal. And, and you'll see a lot of people, you know, go back and forth about, is this unit a great unit for Rifting? I do believe that it is a good unit just because of the fact that the heal is a conditional heal, meaning that you're going to... Find yourself more often than not him utilizing this heal when one of one or more of your units are are, are under fifty percent. So he's like that 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 back you know that that safeguard into healing your units and increasing your attack age um, to make sure that you you don't die. Whereas the people that are running just Chasoons or just Colleens, um, they have great heals, but they cast it uh, anytime they want to. So if if push comes to shove and you get super low and you don't have the heal available, you're going to be sol. So that being said, uh, moving on, we do have Colleen here. Now take note, guys, take note. Um, I am using a five-star Colleen, and the only reason why I'm doing this is because I got the I got the stats that I want. Um, 
I, you know, people might argue that, you know, the stats are a little bit low, but for what I do for level four, you know, speed runs, um, or if I'm doing the level five runs, I'm, I'm doing okay with this particular setup. So rocking with a defense hit point, hit point, and then getting a little bit of subsets here. And you can obviously see that some of these runes are pretty crappy. Um, again, just using what I got, but the 21k hit points, the 700 defense um, for a unit that's on the back line is doing okay for me. Um, that might be different for you, but for me, those stats are holding up. And, you know, obviously I can improve it if I wanted to six star them, but at this time I don't have, I have, I have a lot of other priorities as far as uh, units that need to be six star or whatnot. So uh, that is it for the main units. The only other unit that I want to throw in there is... Um, uh, we got ourselves Brian, and Brian is a controversial unit in my particular team. However, uh, I want to comment on it today because I feel like there is a lot of uh, I do I do find a lot of people more often than not using him, and, and and rightfully so, rightfully so. So let's go ahead and take a look at his setup here. We got ourselves the hit point disturb, and then we got ourselves the attack break. And 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 for anybody that's been been doing the uh, running of the of the rifting for long, uh, for a long time in level four, level five, understand the value of attack break and glancing hit and understand that if you don't have that attack break on, you're going to get one shot at quite a bit. So having a unit that's going to provide that is extremely good. And of course he's, he's almost maxed there. He's still got a ways to go, but a um, couple more skill ups, but yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I definitely want to get one more in this uh, second slot if I can. So um, so this one's a kind of an interesting uh, scenario here. I, I made some changes to some of the units that I used in the PvP, broke it down a little bit so that I can, um, you know, I can get the stats that I want. He is actually running hit point, defense, hit point. As you guys know, I used to run about 40k, 41k hit points on him with 180 speed. I dropped his speed down a little bit because, again, I'm, I'm doing what I was talking about. If I have the opportunity to put a hit point or defense rune on here with that 15 to 20 speed, um, I find this more valuable than running the speed rune with, you know, 15 to 20% HP or whatnot. I find more value in this, something like this. So, um, so this one for me is a great unit. If, if you guys are trying to get more attack break in there, more heal block, yeah, you know, throw this one in here. But I feel this is, and, and correct me, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm, I, I, I believe we go, we will go back and forth on this all the time, but I feel like this particular unit is a controversial unit because, um, I, I know it is for my particular setup, um, but I, I know that some people say that they don't like to use it um, just for the fact that it's, you know, it's there to provide the harmful effects if you need the harmful effects. But if you have the harmful effects from your Colleen, if you're bringing a Colleen, you already have these two debuffs, right? Um, and, and, and let's say your other teammates have Colleen and whatnot, you got a lot of attack, break, a lot of hit points. Still, you see people bringing this one in, um, but they're not using it to, to tank. Let's say they're not using it to tank and they already have plenty of Colleen units that are providing those harmful effects. And some people are feel that this is not the optimal unit in there because it's, it's like a safeguard. Again, when you lose a unit, um, you're going to be, you know, this one's going to, this good, this is going to save you. Right. But at the end of the day, you're not, you're not setting up your team. Uh, you're not setting up your team to, to play a, uh, a crazy conservative approach and you're not, you're not setting up your team expecting to fail. If that makes sense. Okay. You're setting up your team to, to, to get consistent clears and then eventually work in a speedy clears without losing any units that you want to make your team strong enough to where you don't have to rely on a revive. Okay. Reviving is nice, but it's not something you're trying to sit there and, and, and do. And because, uh, in my particular instance, I run a unit that has a reset skill that this unit, um, from my experience, will not use his third skill to reset unless all the other units on your team have have have, have uh, used their, their third skill with the reset and whatnot. So when I pair this one up with Brienne, while I can tank the front line on level five really well, I don't get as many resets on here because I have to uh, I have to wait for him to basically, for somebody to die and then use it. But if I'm not using Jameer, you know, I could sure find a way to, you know, throw this in the mix. But as you guys might have guessed, I'm going to be using J uh, Jameer all day, every day, because the reset is OP when it comes to, um, you know, providing extra cleansing and healing and so on and so forth. So for those of you guys that are fortunate enough to have Jameer and a running Brienne on here, you will notice that you're not able to um, uh, use your reset all too much unless you're dying, you know, constantly uh, with this particular unit. And, and so definitely figure out what you want to do on that. But this is definitely a unit that allows you to, uh, become a hybrid with the HP and defense, you know, deep HP and defense, you know, mixing it up because again, 
His overall stats are really, really good. Great, good base uh, speed, uh, reasonably good defensive, and, and of course, you know, stellar base HP to allow you to still have a high amount of hit points with, you know, overall good subsets. So, um, as you can see, decent crit rate, you know, good accuracy. I, I want him to land those harmful effects when I have him in, but uh, generally speaking, I'm not using him um, only in, in a particular level five group that I, that I run um, if I need to have you know, extra, you know, extra, like, coverage when it comes to reviving and whatnot. Um, but again, my goal is to, is to eventually get a different in, get, get a different unit in there to go ahead and help on the frontline defense and not rely on a reviving type of unit. If I have, if I'm bringing um, my calling or, or everyone else is bringing their callings and this and that, whatever, they're providing the harmful effects, um, so I don't want to double up on, on the units that are providing the same harmful effects and try to bring something else, so... Uh, Gosh, I think that's it, guys. Uh, I don't have anything else to add here. Um, again, just understand that regardless of what setups, what videos you watch, this and that, whatever, uh, it all comes down to, you know, obviously building your units up the best you can, but considering the synergy of your team, your teammates, before all anything. You can have the best ruined units in the world, but if, you're, if you were not synergized with the two people that you're bringing on board in an effort to clear the zone, then nothing is going to work the way it is. Like I said, Brienne doesn't make sense when it comes to Jameer, um, you know, running this particular instance. But if I'm running level five and I have uh, another person that's bringing a defensive leader, um, a universal defensive leader plus a, another another defensive leader for win, like a Delphi or whatnot, then it does make sense to go ahead and bring a, 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 a Brienne that's essentially going to be sitting at like, you know, 1800 or 1900, you know, defense after all the buffs are said and done. So, um, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta play your strengths and your weaknesses and try to, and try to work it out the best you can. But I believe that's it guys. I don't have any other units that I want to talk about. Um, uh, as you guys might've guessed, I did not mention Chandra. Chandra is not a, an optimal unit in my opinion, uh, for rifting. Uh, you can get away with him using him because he does do good damage. But at the end of the day, there's way too many more units that are more valuable. And so you will not see me use him in the rifting, um, in the rifting setup. So, uh, if you guys have any questions with regards to, you know, what you feel, um, should or should not be used in the rifting, make sure you put it on the comment section down below. In addition to, I'd love to hear, um, how you guys are doing, uh, where you're at, you know, in your progression, are you clearing level three, are you clearing level four? Have you cleared the level five? Um, that would be pretty darn cool. Uh, to hear about that. I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get it back to you as soon as I can. So um, that is it for the critical thinking, uh, talking about my rifting setup and the importance of Nemesis runes. Okay. Thank you all for tuning in. It's a pleasure to make these videos for you as always. It's your boy Childish for Childish Place checking out. Take care and we will see you next time guys. We're out.